Welcome to the Neuropathy Support Group and Podcast. I'm Chris, and I'm so glad you tuned in. It's my hope with this podcast to help all of us gather information that might help those that need support dealing with this debilitating issue. Hello, and welcome to this podcast. Before we get started, let's get the formalities out of the way with the medical and privacy disclaimer. I am not a doctor or medical professional. The information on this podcast is from personal experiences and is meant for group support. Additionally, the information discussed is not meant to diagnose, treat, or cure any underlying conditions associated with neuropathy. All names here within are private and will not be shared with any outside sources. Please consult your health care provider before making any health decisions. If you have medical concerns or an immediate emergency, please contact your doctor or dial 911. Well, hello everyone, how you doing? I hope everyone had a great past week. You got out on the weekend, spent some time with you and your family and friends, and had some me time, because that's meditation, and that's going to help you relax and hopefully get rid of some of the pain that you might have. Well, today we need to jump right into this topic. Because I'm going to be talking about 27 things you understand only if you live with chronic pain. And so this is such an issue with all of us. Nobody ever believes us, even though, you know, because we look normal. We look like everything's fine, but they don't know what's going on inside. So when I talk to you about this, um, this report that I found, article, I'm just letting you know that I'll be talking in uh, the second person because this was written by um, Charlotte Hilton Anderson. So it'll be her talking. If you're reading this, you likely already know that there is a large, but largely silent problem of chronic pain in America. One in five adults is living with chronic pain and it is one of the top reasons people seek medic- medical care, according to a 2018 report from the Center of Disease Control and Prevention. The impact is immense. Chronic pain impacts nearly every facet of daily life and has been linked to disability, dis- uh, dependence on opiates, higher rates of anxiety and depression, and a reduced quality of life overall. Yet many people, including those suffering, are surprised by these stats. Chronic pain is not something people like to talk about much. And those in pain are often encouraged to suck it up or put it on a heavy face. Even worse, there is a lot of misunderstanding around chronic pain. For one thing, chronic pain is not the same as acute pain. Explaining it to someone who never deals with it can be, well, painful. People believe that they understand chronic pain. But they have also felt pain, but it's a completely different thing when it's day-to-day out for years. So does that sound familiar? It does to me. Here's one that many of us probably uh, deal with. Uh, she says, we need accessible parking, but are afraid to use it. Having an invisible disability like chronic pain means that you still need accommodations like anyone else with this disability but you worry about being judged, or worse, when you use them. My diseases make me disabled, but I get so many negative looks when I put on, put my handicap placard up. I am in constant sharp pain. I've never been a person who cries easily, but I'm in tears after walking several blocks anymore. Pain isn't visible. Next is, we're not lazy, we're exhausted. When doing even the smallest tasks takes monumental effort, it's hard to get a lot done in a day. To others, this can look like laziness. I am many things, but lazy is not one of them. Sometimes I feel like I should try harder to do more, but just dealing with the pain takes a a lot out of you. It's exhausting. Back and neck injuries sustained from a car accident have left Anika, 29, of Burnsville, Minnesota, in daily pain. But that's just the beginning of her problem. 
She says, because of my injuries, I'm in constant pain, and the pain means I can't do much physically, which has caused me to gain more weight than I'm used to, but in the turn has caused my self-esteem to suffer. I have been side effects from medications and treatments that then require their own treatments, and sometimes it can be seen like anything you do causes a cascade of new ideas or new issues. Tell someone you have chronic pain, and a common response is to ask if you tried this, tried that, a pill, workout, cleanse, program. I really wish people would stop telling me that it will get better with exercise, herbs, med, diet, or whatever the popular advice of the moment is. So let me ask you this. So far, do a lot of these topics uh, are about you. I know a lot of them reflect on me and things that I go through. But let's move on here. Guilt is our constant companion. Having chronic pain can bring up a lot of painful emotions along with physical pain. And the major one for many people with chronic condition is guilt. I see what I think I should be, especially as a mom, and feel guilty that I'm not that person. I feel guilty when I eat. I feel guilty when I sit. I feel guilty when I nap. Yet all those things are necessary for your health which can turn into a vicious cycle of negative thoughts and pain. And that most definitely does. That's, I think that's the biggest um, problem I have right there, is the guilt, um, wanting to give up, you know. But then I think about my kids, and I'm not ready to do that. I'm ready to keep fighting and fighting and fighting and going forward. All right, so our pain sometimes manifests as grouchiness. People often curse when they stub their toe or yell when they touch a hot pan. So it shouldn't come a surprise that chronic pain can also appear as anger. Yet, all too often, people with chronic pain are told that they need to be patient. Forget that. I'm grouchy because I'm sick of hurting all the time. Next is our kids have to grow up faster than other kids. It can be difficult to ask for and accept help, especially if it feels like you're leaning on people that you feel like you should be taken care of. From the time the kids were young, I had to teach them how to take care of me on my bad days. But while you may feel bad that your kids aren't having a normal childhood, know that they love you and want to help. They're learning valuable skills because of this, my kids learned how to cook big, delicious family dinners at a very young age. Here's another topic for me, especially in the last uh, month of the issues I've been having. But we consider our pharmacist a friend. Medications aren't the only way to manage pain, but they are often an integral part of our treatment plan. And yet, this means you're often on a first name basis with your local pharmacist, which is what, you know, I've been, I've been before um, this last month, I've been on first name basis with them for a long time. This isn't a bad thing as they understand your chronic pain condition and what you have to deal with when it better than almost anyone else. I've just had to accept that there will be medication in my life forever. Next is going to be pain changes everything in our lives. People without chronic pain can't begin to imagine all the subtle and surprising ways that it impacts your daily life. There isn't a single aspect of my life that chronic pain hasn't changed. It's not just my health. Everything from the importance of the weather forecast, <laughs> yes, we all know that one, to my workouts, to my household chores, so my mental health is affected, most definitely. We get treated like drug addicts. The topic of opioid medication for treating chronic pain is complicated. Dependency is a real concern, but so is undertreated pain. 
I was on opiates every day for years, and I hated it, but I couldn't function without it. Then the opiate epidemic hit in our mis Midwestern town hard, and suddenly pain pills were prescribed far less, and anyone who asked for them was seen with suspicion. I feel like a criminal every day. I bring it up with my doctor, and they make me jump through so many hoops at the pharmacy. I've even had the cops called on me at the ER. I only ever took them exactly as prescribed, and they still cut me off. Man, that's, man, see, that's the thing. You shouldn't be cut off, right, when in the process of being, you know, as you're taking them. I mean, that just ain't right to make someone go through the withdrawals. Pain management is a lifestyle, not a pill. Whenever I tell someone about my chronic pain, they always ask if I want an ibuprofen. I wish I did. OGC pain meds don't even touch my pain. I have to watch every single thing that I eat. Do the right kind of exercise, but not too much. Make sure I can get at least 10 hours of sleep. Meditate. Go to physical therapy. Wear my compression gear. I gotta tell you about the compression gear. I look like a robocop when I've got all my gear on. Uh, stand up and sit down correctly. And I could go on and on. And none of it is optional. If I miss anything, I risk being in much pain. I can't function. We live in fear of what's next. And that's where I'm at right now. Looking toward the future feels different for people with chronic pain because often they're terrified of what their disease will do next or what side effects will pop up. I am constantly so scared about another flare-up, she says. The last surgeon that operated on me said if I ever need another surgery, I will need a colostomy bag and that thought is horrifying. That's one for me too. I oof, I don't want that if I ever have to. Next is, we don't know this is the story of our life. There is still so much that the medical community doesn't know about chronic pain, what causes it, and know best how to treat it. And no one understands that better than the patients themselves. It was 20 years before I finally got diagnosed. No one knew what I had or how to treat it. I felt like a guinea pig. And even though I have a name for it now, they still have no idea what causes it or how to fix it. The big stuff hurts, but it's the little things that break our hearts. All my surgeries hurt, but what really kills me is I will never be able to do the things like curl my hair, lift my grandkids, back in the carpet, lift a gallon of milk, type on a keyboard, or even unhook my own bra, she says. I feel like I'm not a whole person. I feel like I was robbed of a normal life. So, so far up to this point, I feel everything that this person does right here. This is a description of my life and probably most of you out there. We can do everything right and still have it all go wrong. Nothing is more frustrating than finally figuring out what helps you manage your pain only to have it suddenly stop working. Most of the time, I'm totally fine. It's taken a long time, but I manage it entirely with exercise, diet, stress management. But sometimes a flare will hit me out of nowhere for no reason and I go from being fine to being useless in no time at all. Pain affects our brains. Pain hurts, yes, but it can also cause cognitive issues, including the inability to focus, or they call it brain fog. Honestly, it's the mental part that is harder to deal with than the physical. I've become used to continuing on with my life even when physical pain when my whole head feels foggy and I can't focus, the that is harder to ignore. We've been accused of faking it. Chronic pain is an invisible disability for many people. If they can't see it, it doesn't exist. I really do a good job of hiding my pain. That's me. 
And some, and so sometimes people think I'm making it up or faking my illness, especially when I say I can't do something because I don't feel up to it. This uh, attitude can be particularly painful when coming from loved ones who should know better. It gives them desperate to stop the pain that will try anything. Marijuana was never really something I considered using, that is, until she until I wound up with chronic neck pain after a car accident. Surgery and physical therapy didn't fix the issue, and I didn't like opiates, taking opiates, so at 42 years old, she found herself eating her very first pot brownie. It helped so much that I got rid of my other meds, and now I make my own edibles every month. Chronic pain makes you... Re reconsider everything. If there's a chance it will help and the risk of harm is low, it may be worth giving it a shot, even if it seems really strange or out there, she adds. We've lied about our pain to make someone else feel better. You're already in pain, so why spread it to your loved ones by making them upset too, right? Sometimes it's just easier on everyone else to pretend like I'm fine even if my pain is awful. There are only a handful of people in my life who I can be honest with, and those few are chosen because they know and I, that I don't want to be a drama queen. We've been blamed for our own pain. One way for people to deal with the scary uncertainty of your chronic pain is to convince them that you must have done something wrong to deserve this. I have left so many conversations with people whom I don't know well, emotionally exhausted and in tears because of their assumptions that if I wanted to be better, I could. They assume I won't see a doctor or that I'm refusing to do things to make my life better. Our pain tolerance is superhuman. Some people think that being in constant pain is a weakness, that you're not tough enough. But the reality is the opposite. A donut is never just a donut. Explaining your limitations to people and getting them to believe and respect them can be exhausting. Now uh, this person here says, gluten makes my symptoms flare. Yes, I'm sure. No, it's not a fad diet. If I eat that donut at my morning meeting, I won't be able to walk later. Scary side effects. Don't rule out medication. Living with chronic pain with no respite and no end in sight can sometimes feel like a death sentence. So when you're offered medication that might help, even if it has potentially scary sound sounding side effects, you still consider it. Yeah, I do. We spent an entire party lying in the spare room in the dark. Your pain doesn't care if it's your 40th birthday or the first Thanksgiving dinner with your whole family in a decade or your baby's first steps. It can still totally crash the party. One of the things that causes me the most anxiety is realizing how much life I'm missing out on because I have to lie in a dark, quiet room. Man, these, this... This article is just hitting everything, everything in my life. And finally, the last one, we laugh when people ask when we're going to get better. Chronic pain is unfortunately very often a permanent condition. Most people forget that I'm not going to get better and my limitations are permanent part of my life. They expect to see progress. And when it doesn't happen, it makes me feel like a failure because I can't get better. I just manage what I've got and take whatever good or lousy day comes. Well, you know what? This article, I love it. I love everything about it because this whole article reflects my life. And it probably reflects your life out there too, most definitely. Um, you know, this is something that you probably have a partner or a friend or family should read so they can get a better understanding of how we um, live our lives every day and what we have to go through and 
you know, the importance of them supporting us. Because that's the most important thing. So I hope this article helps many of you out there. I'm so grateful for you guys to be part of this podcast. Don't forget, you can go to my Pinterest page and look at all the uh, products I have on there that I use and that you you can purchase them too just by clicking on the, uh, the address there on the icon. Also, I have my blog is up and running now. I'll make sure I leave all this information with you when I post these, uh, ep- when I post this episode. But again, thank you so much. I really appreciate everything that you do and are part of this show. And I will talk to you next Monday. Bye. As we come to a close, it's my hope this podcast and other sources, such as product reviews that I have discussed today, can better our lives and give us some relief dealing with neuropathy. This episode plus others are posted every Monday on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher. And finally, whatever life throws at you, even if it hurts you, just be strong and fight through it. Remember, strong walls shake, but never collapse. Talk to you next Monday.